Hi. Um, so here's a chance for us to really have a conversation about um, this work okay. in this show. So um, Jeff is a very skilled turner, and why don't we talk about your how you took the opportunity of this residency to really push material into play? Okay. Um, for me, I've I've been a maker. I've been a creative for thirty. I don't know how many years, 35 years or so, started with ceramics, uh, was a retail floral designer for 24 years, and uh, when I started as a wood turner, I, I already knew how to make pretty things. So all I needed to do was focus on the process of creating a bowl, a vessel, a box, or whatever out of wood, and um, that was kind of leaving me uh, a, a good-sized void as an artist that I didn't, I didn't understand conceptual things. I didn't understand uh, sculptural ideas and, and because I also haven't gone to art school um, I, I needed something to kind of fill in some of the gaps in my education and I thought that uh, the, the Craft Alliance Artists in Residence program would really be a great way for me to jump in and, and start learning more about the art side of what I was trying to do. And, and uh, because I've been an instructor here, I've had the fortune of seeing previous uh, classes go through and, and, and really thought that this would be a great way for me to pursue things and, and focus on not just form and function, but color, texture, conceptualism, and things of that nature. So talk to me a little bit about how you dive into your experimentation, because you really went after other materials. Well, that was kind of that was kind of the focus of my application. That uh, I, I needed to I needed to pick a direction when I applied, and and I decided that I wanted to work with materials that are not normally associated with wood turning. That uh, to take my my base form of a wooden bowl or vessel and and apply other tools and techniques and products that you normally don't apply to wood or that normally not seem to be applied to wood and and evolve from there. The cool thing was. Once I started doing that, I realized it was less an experiment and more um, active playtime. So I, 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 I play. Uh, I, I normally wear superhero t-shirts. Um, I'm a video gamer, and, and I like the element of play. And, and being able to come into the studio and just mess with things and see where it took me. Um, lots of happy little discoveries, a couple of accidents, not all of those were happy, but you know, that's part of the process and it really allowed me to uh, branch out and expand my work and, and it, was, it was a fascinating as well as fun process. So I, I really enjoyed just that, that level of exploration, it was something really new for me. Well, this guy here, and, and first, just briefly about me and my style, uh, I'm not political, I'm not overly religious, my work is not going to be in your face, but I realized while I was working on these pieces um, that I, I could tell stories, I could use my work as a storyteller, so that's what I decided to focus on, and, and this one is actually a tribute to my father, he's currently dealing with um, a dementia-related issues. Uh, he, was a, he was an engineer in the electrical field and uh, because he was the, the foundation of the, the family unit, I wanted to take a wooden vessel and, and turn it into a cast iron pot. So reminiscent of the, the, the wood fire and the big cast iron pot and that's where all your meals came from. And then on the inside, because he was uh, an electrical engineer, I, I have some electrical terminals and some copper wiring, but just kind of like his, his memory situation, uh, we've got some short circuits in here and, and there's cracks in, in the sturdiness that used to be there. And, and just kind of, it's just kind of my interpretation of what I see his world changing, you know, evolving into. So I, I, just, wanted to, I just wanted to tell that particular story here with this piece. 
Um, it, the metallic paint is not a new material. Uh, it's, a, it's a material that's been around since the 80s. What's, what's old is new again. But it, one of the things that I was able to do with the residency was spend a lot of time talking to other Craft Alliance artists. And, and I've had many discussions with uh, people in the, in the metal studios. And, and those conversations evolved into patination and then force patination where you're trying to control this, this reaction and effect for color purposes. And uh, I decided that maybe, maybe that was something that I really needed to work on and apply it to wood. So it's a, it's a relatively, uh, it, it's not a new product, it's not a new process, but not everybody applies it in this manner. I was just wondering if it was new to your practice. I, I the, metal, the metal was not new to me. Um, everything on the inside was new. Yeah, that's yeah. It, yeah. Well, this little guy here, this was actually a proof of concept that became the foundation of most of the rest of the work in the collection. And, and going with what you just said, the name of this piece is on the inside. And, and that, was, that was the theme that I wanted to run with a lot of these pieces that I actually created in studio, that I wanted it to look like a normal nor, or normal-ish vessel on the outside. But on the inside, you could see where the story was coming in. And on this particular one, um, people always ask me, well, how did you get started as a wood turner? And, and I started out, honestly, as a result of a car accident and a very minor head injury. And uh, I had what was called uh, post-concussion syndrome, little bump on the head a lot of scrambling on the inside and there were lots of days when this is exactly how it felt on the inside i didn't have big bandages or anything uh it wasn't obvious that i was damaged in some way but that's what it felt like lots of days and i wanted to create uh, a visual recreation of that well what do you mean how, do, how does that how does that feel that's how it felt you know, lots of nails and color and, and angst and tension. And I think I really got, uh, I think I really got the entire concept put together in just this one piece. And can you talk to me about the size of that piece? Because it is so much more intimate than the others. Um, is that the size of your brain, Jeff? Yeah, that's, that's the size of my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of you who know me, you know, there you go. Yeah, this is a, a narrative about another person in your life. I, and I think that was I think that was more intentional maybe on a subconscious level that I I didn't sit down and say okay I'm going to go with this size piece and and make it like so. Um I think it I think it kind of worked out because it was me. It was my story. It was my beginning. It it didn't need to be big and grandiose because that's that's not what I am. It's 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 not about me. It's about the rest of the stories, and, uh, and, and I think that, that actually kind of translated into the size. It's why I didn't make a bigger version. It's because it wasn't necessary. Let's talk about this one. All right. This one, really, for somebody who I know loves color, you really pushed the envelope. Yeah. And it was so much a part of the narrative. Yeah, this, one, this one's called Pass the Sugar. And uh, on the outside, if you look at it, it looks like it's just uh, a garishly frosted cake or, or dessert of some sort. And I, I did this because one of my daughters ended up uh, a couple years ago uh, being diagnosed as type 1 diabetic. And she was in her mid-20s, which is not rare, but it was, it was odd. And, and it was really scary. And, and she, this is my interpretation of her story um, of how she kind of Everything that she liked to consume is now a problem. So while it's, it's pretty and it's pink and it's frosted, the sugar is actually crushed glass. There's broken glass on the inside. Um, I, I experimented with some texturing techniques on the inside and then really played with uh, cold, muted colors that I, I, I didn't want it to be hot and angry. I wanted it to be cold and menacing because that was kind of how, um, that was kind of how it seemed like she was 
feeling, you know, that, that her, her journey, and, and that was, that, so this is my interpretation of her journey. Um, no, um, my, my primary, my primary wood, the, the, the wood that I like to turn the most is, is going to be a maple. Uh, so these three pieces are maple. The big one over there is walnut, just because I happen to be turning a walnut vessel and it almost immediately cracked. Now that one, the, the bowl that I made the piece for my dad, that one cracked, I turned it years ago. And it cracked, I mean, literally, while I was working on it, it was, it was cracking. And because I had so much time and so much effort into that, I didn't want to just throw it away or put it on the fire pit or, or whatever. Um, so I, I set it under the table, and it, and it sat there for years until I had this idea for a story. I need this thing, and I want it to have a crack in it. Hey, I got that one bowl. So, you know, it, it was there, and, and I guess I kept it for the right reason. Yeah. And it's something you put away for later. Um, okay, so this one, I think, is really getting back to the outside of the beautiful wood. Yeah. Um, you're pulling back a little bit from the play and focusing on the inside and the outside. So let's talk about what's happening in this one. All right, this one, um, this one is actually called It's a Trap. And, and the concept of this is, is a toxic relationship. And uh, my other daughter, sorry, kiddo, um, <laughs> she had a really tough time a couple of years ago where she was involved in this toxic relationship. And on the outside, it looked like it was fine and beautiful and wonderful and loving. But inside, it was a mess. And I'm, I'm representing that with, with actual pieces of barbed wire. And, and again, I've got the, the, the colder but more diseased colors on the inside. Uh, but this one I also wanted to try and tie in other materials. So that is a heart, but it is a 3D printed heart. I wanted to, I wanted to add high modern technology to uh, a very analog, old skill, old world, world skill technique. Combine those two together. So how did you make the heart? Did you make it in the studios? Uh, I did not make it in the studios. I made that on my own 3D printer, oh. but, I, but I, it was, Are I needed... You making your little action figure? Yeah, I was making my little action figures. It's like, I, I, I need to do something. Um, but I also wanted to bring in an element. Um, yeah, mad scientist, exactly. Well, that, that's, where the, that's where the texture came from. I wanted to, I couldn't figure out a way to add, uh, to combine wood and ceramics. Because if you do raw clay, it has to be fired. If you fire raw clay, the wood that's involved is going to combust. Uh, so I used, it's actually an epoxy clay, a two-part epoxy clay uh, that I used for this piece, um, which allowed me to use uh, ceramic type techniques in order to get some of the uh, texture on the inside. And, and, and it kind of all worked in together. So this is my mixed media offering, truly. Lots of times I'm working on them. When I come into your studio, you were playing with this, you were playing with that, and it was this constant dialogue with yeah. the mad scientist that you are. That's how that works. Yeah, um, but what I really like is the next transition that was, and, uh, that was happening while you were making mm -hmm. these, which is really talking about surface play, which is getting back to some of the right. roots of things that you really, really love. Um, and this one to me is so successful in that transition right. from the inside to the out, Yeah, this one. Uh, this one's called Road to Recovery, and that was. Uh, this was actually started as the second piece in the collection. And but yes, it, it was. They were all being worked on. It kind of a round robin. I'd work here and I'd work there, and I'd get bored and I'd go do something else. And oh, I've got this brilliant idea. Let's 3D print. You know, blah 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 blah. Um, but I wanted. I wanted something. Uh, this one again is very personal. This one. This one's about me and my story. Um, but I, it, since, I've, since I've started to show it photographs and, and tell the story, a, a lot of people have uh, expressed a, a really strong draw to this piece, that it, that it resonates with a lot of people for a lot of reasons. And, and when you, this is, this is the, the graphical representation of my recovery process from that car accident. So the, the spike in my mind is the initial impact of whatever. For me, it happened to be a physical car accident, but for other people, it can be emotional or, or whatever. Um, and and the, the, the thought is, 
when somebody says you're on the road to recovery, it's, it's a straight line linear, you're in point A, you're going to point B, and you become better, you become healed, but that should take you back to what you were. And, and the process is really nonlinear, and sometimes that road is more difficult than the initial instant that changed your your existence and and I wanted to I wanted to play with the texture uh, to to create the the, the feeling of a, of a road or a path um, I've got the nails both inside and out because I wanted that to, to show that sometimes that road to recovery is actually worse than whatever started you on that path to begin with and uh, and then again having a conversation with um, actually you and Michael uh, talking to other working artists and, and people that are in the art community here at Craft Alliance, um, I, I really needed to think about the base and, and it needed to be part of the composition, not just something that held the composition. And, and that, another, another piece of education that I wouldn't have gotten unless I was here in the residency. So that was, that was a really good formative element for me as well. And I was able to utilize it in this piece. Um, I have two questions. My first one was, as you consider the narrative you're putting forth, how do you as an artist feel when people get it or they don't get it? Uh, if someone says, this resonates with me because, and it doesn't hit the nail on what you were thinking, how do you feel about that in your process of, of venturing into sculpture or this conceptual? Um, I guess it really doesn't make any difference to me because while I'm, while I'm making these pieces for me and for my view and my reaction and my whatever, the minute I share them, it's not about me and my view and my story. It's a story that you and you and you and you and you you're all going to be able to apply your own perspective to my work. And, and I, I, again, I really tried to focus on that as well, listening to you guys um, explain what it means to be an artist. And uh, so the, the work physically is personal. And, and this piece, when I look at it, I have my own reaction because it's personal, it's mine. But I don't expect somebody else to have that same reaction. They might be inspired by the story. The story may trigger their own memories or their own whatever, and they might just look at it and go, yeah, okay, I get that. And, and honestly, learning how to create pieces like this has allowed me to really understand what other artists do. So it's all part of the learning process, you know, that there's a lot of work out there that I like, there's a lot of work out there that I absolutely don't like, uh, but even the, 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 especially the stuff that I don't like most of it I understand. And I go, ah, I see where they were going with that. Yeah. And, and now it makes sense. I appreciate their work, their art, their, their thing. It does not resonate with me for whatever reason, but I get it. And, and, I, and, and that was a fascinating element uh, from a learning perspective for me. Going, well, now I know why I don't like such yeah. and such. You know, it's like, that's great. Right? I yeah. say art is like wine. You know, you should love when you drink and go for it. Yeah. Should that be my segue to everything? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But, um, and I think it shows a lot of your compassion, which is so important to me because your work is so generous, so compassionate, and I see a lot of freedom that I really enjoy. So talking, the second question was getting to this idea. We did talk a lot about, you know, moving from the vessel, something you hold in your hand, to mm -hmm. presenting it to the viewer in a different way, which really leads to these great wall pieces, right? Right. Because um, here you start playing with multiples. You went back to surface. You really pushed the taking the one element out of the out of those bowls and really focusing on it. And, um, so talk to me about how you got to these steps. Well, that piece, the the four the four bowl piece happened first, uh, but the, the the foundation is pretty much the same. Uh, we'll, we'll start with that one. Uh, this one I wanted to do just kind of do an experiment um, based on time. Okay, so that was, uh, I, I, it did not originally start out as a wall piece. It started out as something that I was just running an experiment and I took a great big piece of wood. So one big piece of wood and I made four bowls 
I tried to be really precise so they were all processed, cut, turned, sized, shaped, same tools, same machine, same, same, same. They were all done at the same time in the same manner with the same equipment and I tried really hard to be as precise as I could with each one. And uh, the wood was fresh, so it was green. And so that means the pieces needed to dry. And as they dried, as you can see, every single one reacted differently. And, and that was one of the things that I wanted to showcase, that they're not the same shape. They're not the same level of distortion. This one has a hole in the bottom. That one has a hole in the side. And, and this one's got a crack in it, even though it all came from the same piece of wood from the same tree at the same time. And, and because I view the, the visual texture of the patination process as a representation of the passage of time, I wanted that to be involved here in both of these pieces. So uh, on my art pieces, when you see that patination, assume that I meant that to be added as an element of time. And, and that's, that's part of that exploration. Yeah, it goes back to that original um, bowl about your father dealing, it really reminds you of copper. Right. That is, you know, you know being tarnished over time. And, and it's interesting how the concept of time has played through all your work, even the real narrative stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it happens during time. And yeah. A time in your life and a, and a moment. Yeah, and I love how you brought through the barbed wire, through these. And, and this was, this was, um, not not COVID. This was obviously pre-COVID, uh, but there was a lot of there was a, the the tension was starting to build in the country uh, globally, really. And and I wanted this to be that even though we all come from the same place, every single one of us is different, which doesn't make it bad or or wrong or or offensive or whatever. It just means we're different, but but we all come from the same place. We're all in together. So stop, you know, stop with the conflict. Which is so interesting because wood is so of the earth and yeah. so natural. You know, everything in, in this craft world, you know, when you talk about claving from the earth and we're from the earth. So right. it's always another layer that's subconscious for me with craft that I really relate to and I've always loved. Yeah. Um, so then let's talk about this guy. And then this guy here, um, distancing the binds that tie. This was, this was my first COVID-related piece. And... Um, I spend a lot of time on Facebook. You know that. You know that. Uh, I, I spend an enormous amount of time on Facebook. And, and there was just, it was just one day uh, when people were really being ugly to each other. And it was just, it was just nasty. And, and I wanted to do something that represented a majority, a minority. You interpret what those are. And that we're all connected but because of COVID, we're also now being forced to be disconnected, which is making this, this chasm, this, this distance or abrasiveness in between these, these groups um, wider, while we still have the ties holding it all in together. So there was, a lot of, there was a lot of back and forth with this piece, and we've got the element of time with the force patination. And, and it was just, uh, I, was, I, was in a, I was in a funky mood, and I needed to get it out of my system, and <laughs> that's, that's, that's where it came from, yeah. You are an artist. Yeah. Um, so is this turned? Yes, if you, if you look at the back side, it's a, it's a thin turned square plate, which is, uh, that's, a, that's a regular technique that I teach as, as a normal <laughs> wood turner. Yeah, but and, I uh, you pushed it. And you really yeah. brought it into, and I think that's what makes uh, the work so successful, is that you've taken all your tools in your toolbox, I would mm -hmm. say, and then applied them to this other narrative. Yeah, and, and it's, been a, it's been a wonderful experience. I was really truly. excited to see this piece, because I hadn't seen these guys. Yeah, there, was a, there were a couple of surprises that I brought in. Yeah. Right. Um, I feel like you've taken all these surface experimentation and you're getting back to uh, what you really love, and that's color, uh -huh. that's play of color, it's patterning, it's texture. And I think each, each of these really represents that, um, kind of that full circle technique. Right. Okay, so let's talk about these. Things. Well, full circle, it, it, it's color, oh, it's I'm texture. Dumb. Yeah, but I'm dumb. <laughs> But it's also movement, and, and for me as a turner, 
everything is, is spinning, it's revolving, it's, it's turning. That's, that's how my process has to start uh, because of the machinery that I'm using. And, and I tried to do three different examples of visual texture, not physical texture, but visual texture by playing with color and, and maintaining that, that sense of motion at the same time, which is what I really love. Uh, well, I'm going to give you pure kudos because I had two wood collectors in here trying to figure out how you did it. Take my class. Oh, <laughs> I totally love that secret. Like, yeah. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, if you want to know how I do this, please sign up at craftalliance.org and take one of my classes. <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, and th this was a lot of fun. And I, I did not come up with this technique. This is a, this is a technique that I've seen. Um, not not a lot of people do it because it is very time consuming, and and you do need a couple of extra pieces of specialized equipment. But I think what I did, and since this was the first one that I did like this, um, I wanted to <laughs> wanted to go and make it over the top. Just you know, you know me. It just it's just kind of the way I am. I wanted go big or go home exactly, and and I wanted it to be this just absolutely intense burst of color um, and and there was a lot of discovery here and, and a lot of a lot of different directions and a lot of elements but I love I love the overall technique and I don't know if you can see this I can pick it up because yes. it is mine uh, but when you look down on the inside you know you get you get that spiral I'm effect this in this light, you know, the yeah the other side as well is just that was a lot of fun like feathers. Yeah, exactly there that feathers so Yeah, and just and the smaller the pieces that you work with, the more intense that color and motion is going to become. So there's there's a lot of places I can go with this. I'm actually setting up the next two right now, and we'll get there. Uh, but I'm setting up the next two, and and it just it just an enormous amount of fun. I mean, one thing I really love about your work is that even if it's a serious topic, there's so much joy in what you make. I I, am, I I have the best I have the best yeah do, do you know you're happy yeah. I have the best job in the world I get to uh, I get to wake up and go out into my studio and and play I mean you know there's there's uh, paperwork and orders and and the day to day grind stuff that I have to attend to but there's an, an enormous amount of play time and and that's I love it that's I I couldn't do a office job or something where I wasn't able to create and explore, but then also have a dozen different projects going all at the same time, because that's, that's where I really get strong, is that I'm not trying to focus on one or another, I'm focused on everything. Yeah. Uh, let's just finish off with this. Okay. Yeah, this one, this one was, this one was good. Um, again, the vessel itself was turned many months ago, uh, way back in 2019, <laughs> mid, midway through, yeah, midway through, you know, it's been over a year now, uh, halfway through my residency, I, I had an idea, a story that I wanted to try to pursue, and I turned a very large vessel, and it developed a crack, so it wasn't going to work with story A. Well, I started, I started thinking about story B and trying to run with it, and it felt like I was forcing the process. I don't want to do that. I don't want to force it. If, it. if I have to force it, then maybe that story doesn't need to be told or shouldn't be pursued now. Maybe I'll get back to it later. So again, like the, the big walnut piece that cracked, I set it under the, set, I put it on a shelf, uh, used it as a storage container for bits and pieces, took it home at the end of the residency, stored it in my office, just kind of ignored it. And then I was on Facebook, and, and it was another one of those COVID argument days, and there was just a lot of a lot of back and forth. And um, so I started I started actually writing a poem here because I was I was angry, and and seeing uh, all of these my fellow humans being so nasty to each other over something that we really need to come together on. And, and whatever your angle is, there's no reason to be nasty. And, and that's what they were doing that day. So I wrote this poem just to get it out of my system. But I made sure that I played with the punctuation so you don't really know what my 
perspective is. But that will allow anybody to read it and go, ah, yeah, that relates, I, I get it, without having to identify one way or another. And, and from there, I started thinking about, well, how can I translate that into a piece? Well, I've got this great big bowl, and I need to put something into it. And, well, spheres, spheres are going to work because I can turn them on the laser, they're round, they move, and um, if they're in a vessel, they move around, which is kind of the point here. This is really intended to be an interactive piece. Um, because, because of COVID, you can't touch it. Uh, but then I also needed to, I also wanted to come up with a way to actually make it have that, that, an element of COVID-19. So I talked to Erin King, fiber artist. And uh, the reason why I reached out to her is because I knew that she made these little uh, crocheted neuron mm -hmm. things. I have one. I love it. They're fun. And, uh, and thought that a slightly modified version of that could make a really good COVID-19 virus molecule. Hey, Aaron, this is Jeff. Yeah, I got an idea for a collaboration. Can you make me some COVID-19 viruses? And she said, what? <laughs> so we had it. We had a nice conversation. We, we figured this out. She wanted, you know, how many, how big, talking about parameters. And, and uh, she wanted more information, and I couldn't give it to her because it was all up in here. And just trust me, make a dozen of these. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm really hoping it's going to be great. Uh, so I went out in my shop, and I found that bowl, and I did the, I did the reactive metallic uh, patination on it because it needed to be timed. But because it's a bowl, it's a vessel, it represents all of us. We're all in this together. We're all contained uh, in our communities, in our in our on our, the planet, in our houses, all of these different spheres are, are, it's life, it's family, it's job, it's social, it's interactive, it's, it's everything. And then we've got all of these little virus molecules that are touching everything. And whether, whether you get sick or not, we're all affected. And there's no way that we can't always all be affected because it's there. And, and we have to come together, and we have to work together, and we have to stop being so nasty to each other, or we're never going to get to any kind of real solution. So that's, just, that's a, the COVID collaboration. Um, and we actually, uh, Aaron met us for lunch at a food, food truck park down in Afton. And um, so we, we had did the, the primary assembly on the back of my pickup truck, just yeah. dropped the bed. And, and, you know, so we're out there in the parking lot putting this thing together going, yeah, yeah, take some pictures. Oh, this is wonderful. And it, was, it just worked out really nice. Well, again, full circle, mm -hmm. ba -dum -bum, is that you dealt with all different textures and materials, right? And here you now have the sensitivity to keep, keep that going through. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I just, I think the fiber really adds... The color really pops. And, and, and I, I also kind of took this as a way to summarize my entire residency experience. Sorry that to end it, with it, it, <laughs> it gave me a really good piece. And, uh, but, but we're here, and the gallery's open, and, and things, are, things are moving. They're still not normal, but they're, at least they're moving. And, and this gave me a way to, to, to wrap up my study, to wrap up this study. And, and now I've closed that section and, and I, I'm moving on and focusing on the next batch of work and I'm going to draw from all of this but I, I, I felt that this was a really good a really good way to tie up everything that I've done. And in I here. just love in residence you know you, the, the great thing about the residency is you have this community to feed mm -hmm. off of and this definitely was um, a perfect example yeah. of that. Um, so what's next? You're, gonna, you're working on these guys. I'm working on these guys. I'm working on the tornado pieces. You have I'm working on I'm working on merchandise for sale. Um, hashtag buy more art. Classes are starting. <laughs> if you haven't been to our new location, you can still take a design of our tour online. Um, I know Jeff is biting at the bit to get into the wood studio to start setting that up. Turning classes early November. It is absolutely okay. I teach a, a basic beginner class. I teach an intermediate class. I'm available for private lessons or, or sessions. Um, and, I, and I also do, uh, we're doing a cutting board class. Um, 
we're, to, we're getting ready to put together some very small, uh, not small, but, but low, low skill level needed to begin um, box making classes, you know, simple, simple hand tool joinery. Uh, but if you take one of the beginner classes, you, you don't have to know anything. That's, we're starting from this is what the machine is, this is what the tools do, here's the basic cuts, and, and I've, had, I've had the most fun teaching that class because there comes a point about the third, halfway through the third week where little light bulbs start coming on and the students start to understand the process and they don't need me to stand and help them as much because they're starting to get it. Uh, but yeah, if you've, if you've never turned, in order to get to this point, you have to start at that point. And uh, classes here at Craft Alliance are a great way to learn some stuff. Um, thank you so much. Right, thanks I, for having me. I, um, I'm excited to still be in our midst. I always tell our artists and residents that they can, they can run, but they cannot hide. Yeah, you got your hooks into me. And, yes. and the, space, the space is going to be phenomenal. Yes, we're I'm, I'm there. really excited. Good. Yeah. It's going to feel like home um, slowly but surely. Um, I do want to remind everybody that this is the last week to apply to our residency program. Um, applications are due October 25th. If you have any questions, email me, Stephanie Kirkland. You can see that on the form. It's a program that will start in February. It's a six-month program like Jeff did. Um, and we want to just fold you into our Craft Lines family. And we want to really help you as an artist. That's really the main goal. When we sit and we look at artist applications, we're like, how can we help this artist? And, um, it was so great because Jeff applied and we got to see him play in front of our eyes. Yeah, that was a lot of like fun. Kick him to the curb and put him back in the studio. <laughs> nah, get back and teach somebody else. Okay, you had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go afterward. Um, again, I want to invite you to be with me next Wednesday with Whitney White. And uh, please, the, the shop is open Tuesday to Saturday. You can come see this show. You do have to wear masks. We are asking, we have hand sanitizer for you. Um, so please bear with us as we all get through this pandemic. Thank you so much, and I want to thank Jesse Goodhart, who's behind the camera. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.